Happy Monday. How was your weekend? I decided that I would do a live today on Monday because I want to talk to this amazing entrepreneur and I thought it would be fun to start our week off that way and get us motivated to do all the things as we're wrapping up 2023. There's a lot going on, right? We've got, well, for me, I've got three kids with finals next week. We've got the holidays, New Year's, all kinds of things going on. So I thought, okay, let's do this today. So I'm going to bring on an entrepreneur that I've known for a long time and that I just adore. And we're gonna have a fun conversation as soon as she gets here. So spiritual silks, yay, hey Barb. Thanks for being here, happy Monday. Uh, Barb is doing amazing things with scarves that are related to the chakras and I'm gonna get you on here one day, you just wait. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to bring on, give it a second here. She should be coming on and we'll go. So let me know in the chat how you're doing today. Yay, there she is. Hello, Miss Kyle. Hi. Ooh, don't your earrings look nice? What have you got going on? Um, I have two different earrings today just to be sassy. My mom does it, so I thought I would do that today. Oh, I love it. It looks so good. Thank you. Hey, Patty. Patty's on here with us. So fun. Hi, Patty. Hope the, uh, you're not in too much snow. I, I don't even know. It's, it's so hard in California, right? Of like, I don't know. We just have the same weather all the time. <laughs> All right, so Kyle, entrepreneur that I adore. We've known each other for, you know, I don't, like eight, nine years maybe? Yeah, say? I think so. Yeah, we, we have boys, we're boy moms, and we, um, I don't know where we first met, but anyway, we used to carpool the kids and just started talking about having our own businesses and doing all the things and trying to manage everything and yeah and so here we are today still doing it i remember um looking at you probably eight nine ten years ago and thinking oh my gosh she is so cute and has it so put together and i so wish i could be that kind of mom you know i was like there's boogers all over me and i was a mess but you always looked so cute <laughs> wow okay well i'm glad that it appeared that way because now you know the truth <laughs> It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. We're all just doing the best we can, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, so I wanted to bring you on here today to talk about a couple different things. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to know as an entrepreneur, you've been doing this a while now, right? Mm -hmm. With your event planning mm -hmm. and putting on these amazing events. And from the outside, it's I mean, to me, it seems like, wow, you've got these really great events that you're putting on, that you're managing, you're managing a ton of people. These events are just, they're always A+. plus. Thank you. And I'm sure it's taken you a, some time to get there. And a, I want to know, stumbles. what did you say? Sorry. A few stumbles, for sure. <laughs> right. What would you tell yourself, like your younger entrepreneur self, or when you were first starting out, what would you tell her now? Oh, that's really easy. I would say not to be afraid. Okay. Um, I'm a very, I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm not one of those entrepreneurs that just like try stuff and like, how cool is that? I'm very safe and calculated and I only want to do it if I know that it's going to work. And I wish I would have told my younger self, just do it. Like, just try it and just do it. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. That's a part of life. I don't know if it was me or the generation I grew up in, I just felt like I had, like, it had to be a done deal to do it. Like, that's the smart thing is to be a done deal. You know, yes, because we, you and I are similar in that we check the boxes. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. With everything. <laughs> With everything. We went to college. We got a good job. We got married. We had the kids. Mm -hmm. And then everything kind of you know, uh, fell apart? <laughs> a little bit. I did even have the picket fence. It was cute. It was a little picket fence. I had that. <laughs> you know I what? don't have one anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, that's so true. You did. Oh my gosh. Okay. 
So yeah, I, I love that you said that. Of like, don't be afraid to step out of the norm or try something new. Yeah, based on what's working, right? And what your clients want. Yeah, and I think that um, the access to things today versus when I started my business is different. So, um, you know, it, there, there weren't all the resources at the fingertips. It was, I had a fax machine, I had a pager. Um, like that is how we got work done. We had to, you know, send letters and, and, and rely on colleagues. Whereas now, if you want to start any business anytime, you Google it, and within a day, you can have a license, you can have insurance, and you can get going. And I think that that's one of the cool things about these this generation that's coming in right now is that they can work faster and smarter, and which allows them to be riskier. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, I know everything does come so fast today, right? We have so many things that we have access to where yeah, <laughs> yes. you're not having to cold call or yes. write a letter. Yes. Put things yes. in a, in one of those things they, they like, you put letters in them and you seal it. I think it's called an envelope. Yeah. Like one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. our kids like probably don't even know how to address an envelope. No, no. Does it need a stamp? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so true. Oh, so now that you, how many events do you have per year? About. Um, so I would say right now we have under a dozen, and those range from large festivals um, to you know intimate weddings, or we don't do a lot of weddings, but we do them for special occasions, um, or clients that you know their daughters getting married, so we feel like we've been part of the family, um, and then we also have trade shows. Um, you know, specialty dinners, um, but about a dozen. Yeah, which keeps you very busy, it seems. It's enough. It used yeah. to be more, and then we scaled it back. I mean, that was the nice thing about COVID is we were able to scale things back. My kids are now, I have a freshman and a senior. They're a little bit more self-sufficient. They like me to be gone. Um, so I've been, like, thinking this year, maybe I'll take another one, or I'm kind of missing you know, those blowout kind of 10,000 person events, you know, um, they were really tiring, but you know, it's like childbirth. I kind of forget about it. So now I'm kind of romanticizing. Wouldn't it be fun if we got 10,000 people on a street and we just had street food and margaritas? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it would be fun to attend. I don't know about <laughs> organizing and pulling it off. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I so admire that about you because I have been to events that you've put on and been like, how the heck does she do this and stay sane and still be a mom and do all the things? Do you, how, I mean, that's a really big question, I know, but do you have a mantra or is there, is there, how do you do it? Um, someone told me recently that I don't have any back burners, that I have everything on a front burner and I just kind of move things around. And that was actually a really great visual for me. Um, because I think it's true. <laughs> I think I just kind of move things around and, you know, I do multitask and I'm learning that there's some dysfunction with that. So I'm kind of stepping back to look at my multitasking that perhaps maybe I shouldn't wear it with such a badge of honor. Like I'm a multitasker. Mm -hmm. Um, but honestly, that is what gets me by. So I try to take one thing at a time and I just attack it. And I'm really good if like something happens that's that's not part of the day's plan. I'm good at adjusting. So, okay, great. The kids broke down in the riverbed and we had to spend two hours looking for them. That was two hours I was supposed to be doing a big project. It doesn't freak me out. I can just move the pans around on the burner. Wow. But there's no back burner. They're all right there. They're all <laughs> up in the front. You know, I actually, I love that. And I was going to ask you, you know, what, what helps you as an entrepreneur? And you answered that because it is kind of that, yeah, I, I wear the badge of multitasking also until I'm overwhelmed and burned out and screaming at my family, right? So that it's that. on occasion here too. The what? <laughs> it does happen on occasion here also. Yeah, I mean, I think that happens with everyone. Yeah. yeah. 
But I, but I like that you just know that you're going to move it around and things are going to come up, like trying to find your kids in the riverbed. Or, yeah, today I got, you know, I still need to finish those college applications today. What? <laughs> okay. Those kinds of things where yeah. they're priorities. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, moving around. Yeah. And I process the way I process information, um, because I am kind of a worrier, um, is that if there's something that happens, I already process the 10 con- possible contingencies that could happen in lightning speed. So if I'm at an event or a concert or in a festival and something happens, I've already processed um, in the first five to 10 minutes what the possible outcomes could be so that when the next thing happens, I already know what the plan of attack is going to be. And I just think that's how my brain works. And I think that that's what helps me do what I do because I don't usually freeze under those. I I actually thrive under it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I get a little bit bored if nothing is happening and it's all running super smoothly. But the, I, that's the way I process information. So it's the same. The kids are in the riverbed. I had already decided when to call the police, when to call the dad, when, like, what the, how are we, who, who we were going to, like, borrow for this, and then what, how this project was going to be done. It was already processed wow. before we got in the car to go look for them. This is so interesting that you say that. I, real quickly, I want to say, because I'm getting some highs in the chat from Wyatt, Delaney, and Emma, who are in class right now, but they're watching us. So, hey, <laughs> thanks for being here. And I know Chaz was on here earlier, so <laughs> that's, that's funny. Thank you all. It's so, so lovely. Um, John Batiste, he's an artist I don't, from New Orleans, and I was just listening to a podcast yesterday, and he was saying, if you plan for these things, right, and you have like, okay, well, if this happens, I'm going to do this, and I do this, and then, so you're kind of meeting your expectations already, and mm-hmm. so you don't get freaked out by it. Like he was talking about going out into public and yes. having people come after his wife and saying like, okay, I know this is going to happen. So therefore this is how I'm going to take that next step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah, and, and I thought, you know, most of my life, I just thought this is how everybody operated. You know, I wish that we would find out at a much younger age that there were different personality types um, because I just thought this is how the world operated. And so I didn't quite understand why everyone could not understand, like could not like keep up with that or why I had trouble keeping up with them in a different way. And um, now I realize that the world would be crazy if they were all me. <laughs> nuts it would be nuts (laughs) the two of us running the world as empaths yeah it would be scary (laughs) well (laughs) it would we had this talk (laughs) last week about being so sensitive which Mm -hmm. to me sensitivity goes hand in hand with creativity and all the different things but yes sometimes it's hard for us to relate to other people or for people to relate to us Mm -hmm. so Do you want to talk about that for a second? Yes. Well, I thought for years, again, wish I would have learned this earlier, but I thought for years there was just something wrong with me. I was kind of like crazy. I had all these things firing around in my brain and my heart. Um, You know, why did I care so much about this person over here? Why isn't anybody else caring about them? Um, Don't they see? Um, I was a kid who had temper tantrums. I, when I feel an emotion, I feel it. So I am super happy. I'm sad. I'm eating Ben and Jerry's. I'm then, you know, I'm over in this direction. And I thought that something was wrong with me. And I didn't realize that this is just a part of who I am. And it's actually a really special gift. Um, And it explains a lot. (laughs) I love that you have realized that. And you're right. I wish that, I don't know that that's something we can well, I'll tell our, our, our boys, right? I'm like, well, right. no, it, I mean, I do. I say to them, it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to cry when you're sad. It's, you know, but as they're moving through their teenage years of this kind of macho, especially with them on the football team, <laughs> it's a whole thing. Yes. But to realize that sooner than later of, yeah, I feel things more than others. Mm-hmm. Right? And you and I actually did connect. We were on the same, uh, what is it called? The scholarship group yes. for the Vineyard team, and we were helping underrepresented students, first generation going to college, and helping them, giving them money 
to go to college and we would read these applications and they would destroy us. Right? Destroy. Destroy. But, yeah, like the emotions of just putting ourselves in someone else's shoes and understanding the hardship and see, I'm going to start crying right now. I mean, it <laughs> always, always just gets me of those deep feelings and yeah, I, but I don't know. I, I love that about both of us, to be honest, like we are able to put ourselves in other people's shoes and have yeah. that empathy. Yes. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And so how does that now that you understand that and you're working with that, how does that work in your business? Um, it definitely um, helps me understand myself and have grace with myself because I love the activity of a festival and a concert. Like I said, I love it when there's things happening and I need to solve problems. Um, I love being around my coworkers. I love all of that. But I always gave myself a hard time that I needed a break, that I needed to walk to the top of the hill and take a half an hour and just sit there and kind of watch what's going on, um, that I needed to not stay late and have drinks or food with everyone, that like what was wrong with me that that was overwhelming to me. Um, and l learning that that's just how I operate. It's, it, is, it is really too much for me. Um, to do that and that I do need to reset and that I do need to um, be quiet or be out in nature or just sit even for 10 minutes just have a reset um, has been helpful. I also think it's helpful because there's some danger with this that it can be egotistical um, and also create resentment because I just assume that other people should be feeling the same things and why aren't we all helping this man who lost his job and needs um, needs a home why can't we all help these scholarship students that there's kind of the danger with this is that you create a superiority complex but really this is just how i process information and they're doing it in a different way with different people with different causes yeah. Um, and so kind of understanding that there's a lot of good with that, but you also have to balance like with anything that there's some um, areas where you could get um, yourself into feeling these maybe not so um, flattering, <laughs> um, you know, emotions. Great point. What I heard you say is boundaries, no knowing what you need and then putting up those boundaries, like going and taking the 10 minutes on the hill, mm -hmm. right? Which we, which I think that's a work in progress, <sighs> communicating those boundaries and having people understand or not, right? I mean, we've mm -hmm. talked about that before. Some people just aren't going to understand that and so be it. And then also the, um, yeah, that superiority. I, I have a um, Latina friend who reminds me you know, like, you know, you're, you're just not always the white woman that's going to come in and save every student or child or what have you. And I appreciate that because I do need to be knocked down from that because that's not what I'm trying to do. Right. And I believe it's not, that. At no, not at all. No, no. It's just that we're sensitive. We want everyone to be, you know, in their joy, in their truth. And so, yeah, sometimes I forget like, hey, <laughs> I'm not the savior. Yeah. yeah, and that's like not the role we have to play. And it's really hard because, you know, one day, two days, one year, three years after, I'm still thinking about that same person. And if I don't have ways to process that, it could be unhealthy. And um, while it's great and, it, and I do so many positive things with it, I do have to remember that there's still the same balance on my side. Um, and I have a family that needs to balance. They, you know, they... They don't understand that in my 1200 square foot house, I might be quiet. Um, like, you know, so I have to understand that, like, I can't expect people to always conform to, you know, what I need at that moment. Um, yeah, that's a male female thing also, right? I mean, we, you and I are both in homes where we are the only females except for our dogs. And so we just move differently through the world, be it through <laughs> loud wrestling or quiet reading you know it's there's this like oh wow yeah no totally different 
Yeah, I didn't. We had something happen last night and I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, what is going on? They're like, oh, this is just, uh, this is just, this is me loving Case. And I thought, oh, wow, that's not what that looks like to me, nor is it what I sound like. I think I'm going to go outside for a bit. Yeah, I don't know that walking by someone and kicking them is, <laughs> is love, but oh, yeah, I, okay. think, I think when he was explaining that there was like a, a chokehold and like, you know, they were doing something and like, oh no, I totally love him right now. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I also think, Lisa, like, what are those, what, how do we handle that? It's also keeping the people around us who maybe just, even if they don't understand, they just accept us for who we are. So I know that I have people I work with that they have no idea that, like, why Kyle is, um, you know, so dialed in at times and then other times goes and, you know, takes a 10 minute, 30 minute break. But I think that they accept that. I don't, you know, they might not understand it, but I think they accept it. And it's, um, and it's important to have people around that say, okay, cool. We'll see you in a half an hour. I got yes. you. Yeah, yes. we'll let you know if anything comes up. Yes. And to, and to surround ourselves with people who aren't necessarily the same as us yes. in business and in life. Yeah, because agreed. to me, that would be so boring, which yes. we, we live in a town, Kyle and I both live in this small town, and it is pretty homogeneous. And so I don't know, I always encourage my kids, like, go and meet some other people and see some more just different than you, because it does, I don't know, it, to me, it, it can be a little scary sometimes, because you're putting yourself out there. But it, it's always a good thing. And I see that in business and i'm sure you experience that as well as you're putting on these huge events yes yes <laughs> big events with lots of people with lots, lots of emotions <laughs> so quick question okay how do you decompress like what do you do just for you i'm still figuring that out um i do really enjoy um there might be this little thing called pickleball. <laughs> Small little thing. Can we bring that up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so this is kind of funny. So pickleball started because I did my challenges for um, the year instead of um, instead of um, resolutions. I did challenges, and one of them was to do something that I'm not good at at all and just go all in. Um, and so pickleball, I'd never taken up this sport. Um, what was it? And uh, the first time I went to the court, I turned around, went home. I thought, there is no way. Like, this is ridiculous. These people are so good. I was so intimidated. Because as adults and as adult women, we rarely put ourselves in situations where we're not going to do a good job, right? Mm -hmm. We only do things we're good at, you know? Right. Um, so this was, I hadn't done this in, I don't know, 40 years. Um, and so I took it up and then of course, as it happened, I really liked it and have gotten okay at it. And so I'm now in tournaments and stuff and it's really fun. Um, <laughs> so, but I really enjoy it because I can drill, I can drill by myself or with someone else. We can listen to music. We don't need to chat. It can be social. Um, so I fulfill that social part, which I normally hide from. Um, but then it can also be solo. Um, and then I travel and I love walks on the beach and soft music and podcasts and crime stories and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> like everybody else. Oh, and I have floated. Have you guys ever floated before? I want to know if anyone has floated before. So you go, in, it's a sensory deprivation tank. So no sound, no light, and you're in water, but it's super high. Um, like, I mean, you're, you feel like you don't have arms or legs. You just are floating and, um, it's great. It's sensory deprivation. I mean, I sometimes have to have to like move my arm just to make sure I still have it. Um, and I really do enjoy that. I try to do that every couple months just to kind of like reset. How? Okay. How, this is it. No, this is interesting. No, I know. I actually, I mean, to me, there's nothing better than getting in the bath at night and just like sinking down and I can't hear anybody and I'm alone. Is it kind of like that? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm a lizard, so I really like warm weather, and so what I do first is I go in the infrared sauna, 
So, and, oh, and I also, in case you haven't figured it out, I have trouble decompressing. So um, what I do is I go in the infrared sauna and I do listen to waterfall sounds. So it's not quite music, but it's not quite silent. So I sit in there for 30 minutes at 140 degrees and I sweat all my toxins out. And then I listen to my waterfall music and I'm warm. And then I go into the float. And the float is cooler water no sound there if you want you can have like some kind of cool new age music playing but i do it so that i no sound no light and you it's like a pod like a little like a little round pod and you just float and you have a little thing that goes under your head so you don't and i think i fall asleep i'm not sure but i'm oh. pretty and you just float for an hour has anyone else on here done that because that sounds amazing, actually. Yeah, and then you go out in the little, you know, you can have some tea, you can like sit and like, it's really good for your body too. So if um, I'm coming off of an event and just my body's sore and tired, I'm yeah. not sore and tired after that. And it's also a good reset because my mind is like, um, and so if I go and do that, it's like, okay, like take the adrenaline down a notch. Yeah, oh wow. <laughs> now that is some self care. You and I you are not know, sad about that. Do you want to know how I learned about it? Yes. The husband. Oh. oh. So for people on here who don't know what a husband is, can you tell them? <laughs> um, he was my husband. <laughs> So I have a husband and I have a husband, um, but my husband does it. He's wired very much like me in a lot of ways, a lot of adrenaline. And he said, I think you should like check this out. And he actually bought me a gift card for it one year. Um, you know, like one of those like things that was just out of the blue. And um, so, yeah, I tried it and I actually kind of liked it. It's, it's, a, it's hard. It doesn't come naturally to me to like sit quiet and float um, for an hour, but I really yeah. like it. Yeah. I think that, yeah, that, that would be kind of getting out of your comfort zone, which is, yes. like, again, what we all need. And what a great way to decompress. Yeah. Whoo. Okay. I'm going to, maybe I'll scare myself and try that. Thanks. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> well, we still have a couple minutes. Want to ask Kyle about events or anything if you do just drop them in here and i will ask and i know while we wait kyle you travel often as an entrepreneur you're able to do that which yes. is wonderful yes what, what's been your favorite place that you've gone in the last couple years um i actually i really well my favorite place in the entire world is australia love that i've been a couple times and spent significant time there but recently we went to Colombia right before COVID and it was the it was the second place, second to Australia, where I said, Oh my gosh, I could come back again. Um, we were there for about a month and we did the jungle, we did adventure, we did Cartagena, we did the beach, we kind of did a little bit of everything. The Amazon's ridiculous. Um, so that was I highly recommend Colombia. And it's not like full of it's not like the drug lord 1980s image like we all have. It was it was awesome. We loved it. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And you're able to travel with your teens, which is pretty cool. Um, we'll see. I leave in five days, and I'll let you know if it's cool or not. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now that they're a little older, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. It was really cute when they were little, and it was like, let's stomp in the puddles, and let's, like, zip line, and there were no phones. So we travel with them, but we haven't been out of the country, actually, since before COVID. Oh, we did a road trip to Baja, but, like, does Mexico really count, you know? So, um, but this is the first time we're getting on a plane and going out of the country since before COVID, and they're a little bit older. Okay. So I'll have to bring you back on like next month and and see how that went. I'll let you know if they came back with us. <laughs> or you might still be decompressing. Yeah, yeah I might be floating. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so you are not currently taking any new clients for events right now? I am. So we wow. are. There are still some okay. slots that we have available because the kids are older and we thought we would want to take a few more events on. So we are. So if anybody has a concert, festival, little party they want to throw, let me know. Yeah. And how, what's the best way to find you? Um, you can find me on um, Instagram. 
Yes. Um, and then you can, our web, my website, my business name is Just Us Event Consulting. Nice. Or you can just ask anyone in town because they all know where to find me. <laughs> but you guys, yeah, so can you name a few for the locals who are on here? Can you name a few of the events that you put on? Um, yes. So I work with Brain Business Monthly and we do the Wi-Fi trade show. Um, we also do Whale Rock Music and Arts Festival with Castoro Cellars. Um, I help Allie with the Firestone Walker International Beer Festival. Um, launch, relaunching this year is the From the Barrel event, which is going to be run by the Paso Robles Distillery Trail, which is a super fun one. Um, oh, Suckled Hens Antique Show. Yes. And then we have some private events in there. Woo! Yeah, just a few things on your plate. Just a on few your burner. Things. On your yes. stove. Yes. <laughs> Front burners, Lisa. Front burners. Front burners only. You're moving. Okay. All right. I got it. <laughs> Gas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So good to talk to you. Always. I know you're so far away. Hey, up the hill. I, yeah, I know. We live down the street from each other. I thought, wow, we could have just done this together. I but, know. Uh, we'll do that again. We'll sit on That's your porch. Time. <laughs> yeah. You are amazing event planner. I, I love your sensitivity. Um, Thank you. You put so much good out into the world, whether it's raising your kids, putting on events that raise a ton of money for charities, and just what you do on the side that people don't even know about to help underrepresented students. And so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Loved it. And please, anyone, go follow Just Us Events Consulting. See what Kyle is up to. And thank you all for being here. And I'll, I'll be back next week with, yeah, Rob, I think. So thank you, Kyle. Cool. Yeah. Happy Have holidays, everyone. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>